Speaking of more rankings and ratings and expectations that are depicted in such a way, the AP poll came out on Monday and Miami is number 19. Yeah. Florida, that, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say Florida State, I believe at 10 and Clemson 14 off the top of my head. Yeah. Um, I'm fine with it. Uh, I saw lots of people saying, you know, like they would prefer being unranked. I saw, I don't know if it was CBS's top 134 or somebody else's ballot, but I saw somebody had Miami like, it's Joel, Joel Klatt's list. And he had Miami at like 12. And I'm like, do I think that we earn our way, that Miami earns their way there throughout the course of the year? Yeah. Starting the season? No. Got to show and prove. Um, and, you know, by putting Miami at 19, at least there's one ranked team going into this early season matchup in week one and, and things like that. Um, yeah, I think where Miami's rated is or ranked going into the year is pretty fair. Um, yeah, and just got to hit the ground running and go go out there and execute and win these games, man. Um, you know, that's what we're about. Here's a few different viewpoints I have on rankings. When it comes to preseason rankings, there is part of me that says, I don't care what you rank anyone. Rank Wake Forest 1, Rutgers 2, uh, Virginia Tech 3, whatever you want to rank, anybody. I, it, because once they step on the field and there's a result, then, okay, you need to line up your rankings in a logical manner based mm -hmm. on the results. But in the preseason, hey, if somebody, if there would have been a Wake Forest, number one, it would have been stupid. But I, I would have said, who cares? Who cares? It's preseason. Yeah. Rank these teams whatever you want. Now, the logical way to do it is to look at last year's um, team for all these individual teams and say, how good do I believe this team was? It was a 10 and three team, but maybe I think they got a little lucky or they were a little fortunate or they had a rash of injuries. They were actually even better than that. But basically they were a 10 and three team. This is who they've added. These are the subtractions. And this is where I believe this team is. The, the other issue I've got with preseason rankings, and this is actually coming from talking to AP writers who actually do the voting is that some of them look at the schedule. So they are making a prediction. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that, that let the schedule play out and the results follow. If you believe that this is the 10th best team in the country, if you believe Florida is the 10th best team in the country, then put them at number 10. Don't say, Oh, they, they can't make it through that schedule. They're going to go six and six. So I'm not going to rank them. No. Don't make a prediction. Yeah. Rank and, the teams where you believe the team should be. Yeah. And that's that's also the problem with these rankings because different people come at it with all these different viewpoints and that gets muddled together. There is no consensus on we are ranking the best teams at this time. We're ranking the, uh, you know, the schedule result. We're looking at the, the, and all of the things that you're mentioning and more are the mentalities and viewpoints of the voters as they approach this task. And that's why it's like, sure, fine. You know, like I said, Joel Clyde had Miami at 12. Uh, AP ends up having him, uh, having us 19. Um, could be unranked. Could be, you know, if you're predicting and everything. You know, I saw Josh Pate said, you know, firm and final 11 and one for Miami this season. That's his prediction. That's what's going to happen. Um, book it, set it, and forget it. Now, if you say, okay, that Miami's going to be 11 and 1, you would expect them to be a top eight, if not five, team. And if you believe that, and that's how you're looking at it from this standpoint of, of doing the preseason rankings, vote Miami top five. You know, it's just like, yeah, but it's just such a disparity of thought. And there is no real firm direction. It just says rank the top 25 teams. That's literally the task. Like, What's my what's my logical foundation? What are my metrics of evaluation? What are the mm, rank the top twenty five, and this is why you get it as it is. So yeah, I'm also with you that regardless of what the numbers are early in the season, when you start to rank teams based upon performance in the year, which you are what your record says you are, then it starts to work itself out. Here's another theory I have: group think that. We've got the AP poll, which came out about a week after the coaches poll. Line the two up 
they are almost exact. The first discrepancy comes at eight and nine. Big deal. Penn State's eight. They're nine. Michigan's eight. They're nine. And then you look through the rest of it. They're almost exact. And there is a whopping two slot difference with Kansas and NC State down at the bottom of the poll. Otherwise, Hmm. they're almost exact. There's a few that are off by one spot. So this is my thought. You can't tell me that if you isolated all these people, once the national championship was over, if you isolated everyone and there was no contact on social media, nobody heard anybody else's opinion, you simply got to watch last season and then you were fed all the pertinent information as to what's going on in the transfer portal, what's going on in recruiting, what's going on with injuries, and you ranked all these teams as individuals Versus knowing what the thought out there was about all these teams, that there would be wildly different opinions on these teams rather than uh, Georgia and Ohio State are the two best teams in the country. Then kind of Oregon, Texas, Alabama, they're like next. And then it seems like everybody pretty much has slotted down through all these tiers of where they expect these teams And again, I believe that if we were independent thinkers, that people would think much differently about these teams. And that is that is fair. Some other interesting tidbits concerning the rankings that I like to point out is that I posted two videos, one today, one yesterday. So. In 21 of the last 30 seasons. There has been a top 10 team, preseason top 10, that has finished unranked 20 out of 21 years. So that's almost a guarantee. When you look at that top 10, somebody's not not just going to be in the top 10. They're not going to be ranked. Uh, So I produced a video trying to figure out who's that team. And what's astounding is last season, it was just one team. It was USC at six, finished eight and five unranked. The year before, um, no, hold that thought. That's the reverse uh, process. But but again, 20 out of 21 years. So to look at the top 10, you're almost called to be insane by a lot of people if you try to figure out who that is and say, I'm going to predict Penn State's not going to finish ranked or Notre Dame's not going to finish ranked. Are you kidding me? That's crazy. Well, history tells us somebody is not going to finish ranked out of that top 10. I mean, Flip. that happened. Sorry to interrupt you. You know, that that four and eight year in 2016 that Notre Dame had that everybody could make fun of them, but not us because we were one of the teams that found a way to lose to them. Um, and like TCU after they made it to the national championship game. You know what I mean? Like, oh, they're, you know, number two in the country coming back, which would be reasonable if you're saying, hey, the final standings of last year, you know, put that forward and everything. Then they, you know, lost a shootout to Colorado in the opener and then like, you know, whatever. But like, yeah, you're gonna say, oh, well, that like it just these things happen. Sorry to interrupt. Continue. Yeah. So the so the flip, I should have given a break there for you to to chime in on that portion of it. So the 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 flip side of that is how many unranked teams in the preseason will finish not just ranked. But in the top 10, so last year that was Missouri, unranked preseason number eight after finishing 11 and two. The previous two seasons, this seems unfathomable. The previous season, 2022, five teams in the final top 10 were unranked in the preseason. Wow. And in 2021, four out of the 10 were unranked in the preseason. So that's in the last, or in, yeah, multiple uh, years, nine of the 20, like, final top 10 team. That's, you know, a short and a half, guys. That's like, you know what I mean? Like, that's, that's a lot. So I produced a video trying to figure out who could possibly be those teams this year. Is it Virginia Tech? Is it Iowa State? Unranked. It's hard to find teams that seem reasonable top 10 caliber teams. Well, but and it's probably going to happen. And that's a 28 out of 30 year run that mm. somebody unranked has finished in the top 10. And I would say if Miami were unranked, which would be reasonable based upon last year's results, they would, I mean, that's the clear, easy answer there, you know, but like, again, people, 
and again, I think with the with the different viewpoints of what the preseason top twenty five is, that's the reason why Miami is ranked going into the season. But otherwise, like, yeah, it's just like cool, pretty easy, you know. Uh, yeah, put some some good money down uh, on that. Like uh, when I went to the casino with uh, my <laughs> with three of my aunts the other week when I was away up in Chicago. That was a lot of fun. Were, were they like, uh, was this um, a novelty thing for them or are they hardcore? Oh, <laughs> a little of both. Uh, yeah, a little of both. Uh, one of them that lives out there that way, she's pretty hardcore. And the other two uh, who were visiting as I was visiting were like, yeah, you know, we'll go do it. She's like, yeah, I know. So like Saturday night, like I go for 90 minutes to two hours. That's it. I have my system. I, I know which machines I'm going to go sit at. If this one is like, this is my number one option. If it's taken, this is my number two option. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, yeah. Y'all want food and drink? Like there's, you know, places at the casino to get that. Uh, if you want to play some stuff, cool. But this is what I do. Let y'all know. Um, and y'all are all staying with me. So you can stay here and like talk or we can go to the casino. But like, I'm going just so you know that. So, uh, but yeah, in a similar type situation, if, if if Miami were unranked, getting back to the point, uh, then that would be the really easy choice. So, yeah, to put five on the orange and green and white uh, to be the team that was unranked to end the season ranked. But since that wasn't the case, it was difficult for me to find those teams that are unranked. Yeah. yeah. I was I was looking at Iowa State and Rutgers just because they play a cushy schedule and – the like Virginia Tech, a lot of people like them. Yeah, that's going to be a tough game in week five uh, for Miami, by the way. Um, short week going in, it's a Friday night, or week four, excuse me. No, five, I'm right. It's four non-conference and then Virginia Tech on a Friday. Um, that's a, But that's a game that everybody's been pointing to. Uh, but that will be interesting uh, in week five. And then, you know, we play on the Friday night, you know, so usurping the ability of the staff to go watch high school football so that there's the extra travel day the next week because week six, uh, Miami finally leaves the state of Florida to go out to the Bay to play Cal in Berkeley. Um, and yeah, I mean, as you're looking at it, that's a little bit of a tough, tough turn of the schedule um, there. But, you know, I think that Miami has the ability to be there um, and do everything that needs to be done. 